Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis. This is Ras Dennis welcoming you to another episode of Reggae Just Extra. Yes, sir. On today's episode, we shall be looking at one of the most prolific leaders of the conscious reggae dancehall movement. Emerging in the latter half of the 90s, who helped lead dancehall back to the musical and spiritual influence of roots reggae and heavily Rastafarian subject matter. This person is no other than Sisla Kalanji. If today is your first time of watching our YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button, like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. He was born Miguel Collins on April 17, 1976 in St. Mary, Jamaica, to devout Rastafarian parents. Like them, Sisla subscribes to the Bobo Ashanti branch of the Rastafari movement. He was raised in August Town, Kingston, Jamaica where he studied mechanical engineering at Dunoon High School. The 1980s witnessed a dance hall explosion, and with the music came the lifestyle. Sizzla watched carefully, collecting his lyrical ammunition. He began his career in the music industry in his early teenage years. After honing his vocal skills, he landed a gig with the Caveman Hi-Fi Sound System, where he first made a name for himself as a performer. He cut his first single for the small Zagalo label in 1995, and soon moved on to Fatty's Exterminator Burrell. Extensive touring with fellow roots and culture artist Luciano followed, earning Sizzla critical acclaim. Working with Fatty's marked an important turning point for Sizzla. From the outset, their relationship was one of mutual respect and inspiration. A run of successful singles led to the release of Sizzla's debut album, Burning Up, R.A.S. The alliance again proved fruitful a year later with the follow-up, Crazy Ja, Jetstar. Securing his position as a top conscious reggae artist, he set about cultivating his role as a spiritual messenger. Sizzla's combination of Rasta principles and up-to-the-minute dancehall rhythms made his hardline approach more palatable. A brilliant and passionate performer, Sizzla broke boundaries, appealing to those looking for something new, music with depth. His major breakthrough came with the release in 1997 of the now classic album, Black Woman and Child, Greensleeves. Bearing all the hallmarks of Bobby Digital Dixon's dancehall-influenced production, the impact on both the reggae and mainstream markets was phenomenal. The evocative title track, issued as a single, rapidly achieved anthemic status. Along with universal praise came Sizzla's first nomination for Best International Reggae Artist of the Year at the 1998 MOBO Awards and a place in various magazines' top 100 albums of the year. Sizzla scored several more hits during 1997, including Like Mountain, Babylon Cowboy, Kings of the Earth, and the Luciano duet Build a Better World. This hot streak kicked off an enormously productive recording binge that has lasted for years. He has an ability to fuse passionate lyrical styling with deceptively simple rhythms that take in range of genres from staccato dancehall and gentle roots reggae to surprisingly commercial R&B and soul arrangements. Overall his music is generally positive, advocating faith, compassion for poor black youth, and respect for women. He remains something of an enigma to the public at large, rarely granting interviews and keeping his concert appearances to a minimum. Nonetheless, he still ranks as arguably the most popular conscious reggae artist of his time. A versatile Sing J style vocalist with a gruff, gravelly tone, he is capable of both rapid fire chatting, powerful, melodic singing, and his best backing rhythms are among the strongest in contemporary dancehall. Sizzla Kalanji has released over 46 impressive solo albums and over 15 combination albums, crossing different genres of reggae. The number of mixed tapes on the street are countless. He also started his own company Kalanji Records. This set the mark of his growth not only as a great reggae artist, but also a record label executive and businessman. In a joint venture with Kalanji Records, his most recent album The Overstanding was released in November 2006 with Damon Dash Music Group and Cope Records. It is as prolific, infectious, and melodic as the previous albums. This is his third album released through Kalanji Records, as well as Black History and Life. 
Sizzla Kalanji continues to release music through his career showcasing the level of talent that exudes through his creativity. In addition to his musical breakthroughs, Sizzla continues to build different business opportunities to empower himself and the community by creating an environment for young people to grow and develop skills. In February 2010, Sizzla traveled to Zimbabwe to perform at the 86th birthday celebration of former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe. There was a near riot during his performance, including beatings of crowd members by police, causing Sizzla to temporarily halt his performance and ask the police to cease the beatings. Later that year, Sizzla was rewarded with a farm in the country, with the artist stating he was here to stay in Zimbabwe. He also voiced plans to begin an agribusiness and build a recording studio in the country. The moves were not without controversy, particularly among Mugabe detractors who insisted he not perform for the president. Sizzler refused to condemn Mugabe post-performance, while insisting the land he received was not a reward from the Zimbabwean government, but given to him by the local people in appreciation for his performance. He also stated plans to eventually make Zimbabwe his permanent home. Sizzla has faced backlash due to the anti-gay lyrics in some of his recordings, causing the cancellation of many international concert events. In 2004, he was barred from entering the United Kingdom for several concerts. Outrage, a British LGBT rights group alleged that some of Sizzla's songs contain lyrics that advocate violence against LGBT people. In 2007, Sizzla's concerts in Toronto and Montreal were cancelled after protests from Stop Murder Music Canada Coalition. Kalanji's song titled, Now Apologize, was recorded in 2004. In 2008 his visa was cancelled preventing him from entering Germany after performing half of his tour and he was sent back to the United States. Sizzla maintains his stance that he is an artist using his creative expression and freedom of speech but will speak out against injustice where he sees it. In 2009 and 2010 several concerts in Germany were cancelled after public protests against the concerts. In 2012 concerts were cancelled in Madrid, Spain, Gent, Belgium, Stockholm, Sweden and Lisbon, Portugal after public protests. Kalanji Music issued a statement after the cancellations that he abides by the laws of every country that he performs in and is not trying to invoke or incite violence against anyone. Sizzla is no doubt a very brilliant songwriter and Jamaica being a small island has produced way more than her fair share of great songwriters from the King Bob Marley, Bob Andy, John Holt, Barris Hammond, Gregory Isaacs, just to name a few. The truth is, however, none of the names mentioned even come close to Sizzla Kalanji in terms of songwriting abilities. Sizzla is only in his 40s, yet he has released over 80 albums. He has written more than 90% of all the songs he has released. What is even more remarkable is Sizzla does not rely on reformatting or borrowing from things that has already been said when writing his songs. Some will argue that Bob Marley was the greatest songwriter out of Jamaica. While there is no denying that Bob Marley is the most famous Jamaican ever, his writing skills cannot be compared to Sizzla. A lot of Bob Marley's most famous lyrics were actually taken from other famous Jamaicans, the Bible, Rasta elders, and old Jamaican proverbs. Unknown to many non-Jamaicans is the fact that phrases from Marley's songs like Every Day the Bucket Goes to the Well, Life is One Big Road, Chicken Mary, Hawk Denier are just everyday Jamaican sayings that Bob Marley skillfully put to music. Sizzla, on the other hand, is much more creative and original in his songwriting process. So, when listening to Sizzla and you hear a wise and clever phrase, it is actually a phrase from Sizzla, such as, to disrespect the woman, I disagree, how can you stand and curse a bearing tree? Most likely, Sizzla will never get the worldwide acclaim for his songwriting abilities. This is for the simple fact that some choose to wrongly interpret his music as being divisive, for example, lyrics like, I have no white god, don't teach me anything wrong. 
Would a white god save me from white man oppression? Sizzla has also been his worst enemy where even his most ardent fans have had to question his motives. How does such a talented individual goes from uplifting songs like Black Woman and Child to degrading lyrics like Judgment Yard 4 Sub D Wood in her dash? How does he go from singing to see love amongst my friends to Sizzla that is heaven to singing gangsta nut left dim gun? And if actions speak louder than words, how does such a great man go from smoking high-grade marijuana to drinking Hennessy when Bob Marley already told us that alcohol is the destruction of a nation? This does not take away from Sizzler's creativity, however, if anything, it shows versatility. He can write songs for the righteous rosters, the girls behaving badly in the dance halls, or the gangsters on the street corners. As Sizzler said, a Nummacomb X or Martin Luther this. A Sizzler walk come to trick all the tricks, maybe the inconsistencies in his lyrics are just part of the trick up his sleeve. If you love great lyrics, even if reggae is not your favorite genre, Sizzla is definitely an artist you should listen to. Thanks for watching and kindly leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. However until we meet again, please subscribe, like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me, Brass Dennis, and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Brass Dennis. Oh.